Morning, guys. Morning. Okay. Still not awake yet. Got me coffee. So, if you're new to the channel, it's uh, Defending Elvis Presley Fans Want the Truth. And I think the name just says it all. The shortened version is Defending Elvis. That's what we are, isn't it, guys? Defending Elvis. Hi, Philomena. We've got Lorna, Teresa. Um, so if you just wait for a few of you to join us. Um, I don't have a particular topic, um, but there's a few things I do want to talk about. I haven't even read all, all your messages. I read a lot last night. I'm definitely going to read some of your messages. Um, so... Anyone coming onto this channel now, please join our Facebook. We're called Defending Elvis Presley, Louis Daily Live Streams, Louis Daily Live Streams. And I love that Facebook channel. Um, it's a great way where we just come together, even if we're not live. So many times we are doing a live, uh, we come to the end of it, but we've still got questions to ask each other. And I'm and um, I get brilliant. I get brilliant um, comments from you guys constantly. A lot of research comes through to me from the Facebook, from you guys, um, and many of you are messaging me direct on my name, Louis McCready. So, if any of you want to message me direct, I'll put my name up. That way, if you want to send me information, now I get a lot of things getting sent to me. I read all of it. I tend to pick out the bit, the things that I think, oh yeah, that gets my attention, but not just that. I tend to pick out the things that interest me. Because there's some great, great, you send me a lot of great stuff. I watched Rhonda's video this morning Brilliant information, great video. I recommend you guys go and watch Rhonda's. But I need to be in the, when it's court documentation, uh, you know, going through the Bridget Cruz um, lawsuit with Priscilla and the counter lawsuit, and then the updated stuff that is following this lawsuit, it's great, but I do have to be in the mood for it because I find you've got to really concentrate, like absorb it. So sometimes I like to just do the fun stuff. Like last night we did the um, Elvis ex-girlfriend. Uh, um, it was mainly about Priscilla. And I enjoy things like that because it's it's quite lighthearted, but we can get into quite deep debate because we're so passionate about Priscilla. Um, but, you know, then I like to talk about um, and, you know, the Memphis Mafia or Dr. Nick. I just... Sometimes it's nice just to chat. So one of the things that came up this morning. Oh, I love a coffee in the morning, guys. One of I might top up in a minute. Right. I wanted to talk about. There was a few questions I've been asked. Uh, I, I want to talk about Elvis, how he would have been had he not become famous. I also want to talk about. Uh, I personally think that there was a change in Elvis. He had the early girlfriends, people like June Junico, even Anita Wood. He was on his way by then, wasn't he? Um, obviously, the girlfriends that he went out with as a teenager. I think there was a change in Elvis. Uh, I think it was probably from when he met Linda Thompson onwards i think he was a different elvis than the elvis before maybe it was caused by quite quite a brutal divorce maybe it was caused by um i think elvis being very badly treated i think by the way that priscilla was unfaithful so how she was unfaithful with steve peck dance instructor in 68 just after Lisa Marie was born or how she was treated so how he was humiliated so publicly with Mike Stone now, 
in my opinion, that once the Mike Stone thing happened, I think Elvis was changed forever. It was very public. It was, in my opinion, it was very cruel. Now, I know, to be fair, we know Elvis was no angel. I understand that Priscilla Presley obviously had issues. If she's going through a pregnancy um, in 67, you know, straight after the wedding, yeah, um, they'd only just been engaged. If in her mind she felt, um, how can I say it, a longing for attention, maybe she was reaching out, um, how can I say it? Something was wrong. Because we have to try and also put ourselves in Priscilla's shoes. Now, I'm very upset with Priscilla. I think the way she handled Elvis in 68 and 71 was very cruel and very wrong. Is that Diana? I better tell her we're live. Uh, just gone live. Just gone live. So Diana's going to join us. Um, so, you know, we can't just ignore her. We can't, what I, I say to people is, we can't all just see it from Elvis's point of view and all be so loyal to Elvis that we are blind, blinkered to the bigger picture. There is a bigger picture. Um, what was Priscilla going through? You know, how did it affect her emotionally? Something was wrong, guys. And I'm not going to blame Elvis because it could be to do with her own personal needs, her own personal needs for another man, for her career, um, to find her way, to make her way in the world, in the big world. But whatever it was, she was no good in a marriage. I really believe that. I also believe Elvis was not ready for a marriage. Then I think that they had a bit of a fake marriage in 69 and 70 and early 71, where the whole thing was a pretense, fake Elvis news, I call it. Um, Elvis was getting on with his life as if he was a single man because he had felt betrayed by his wife, who had had an affair with Steve Peck just after Lisa Marie was born. So, of course, he didn't want to go anywhere near her sexually. Yeah, and I don't blame him. What man would? But I also asked the question, why did, why did it come to that? Why did it come to her going, I need attention from elsewhere? We can't ignore it. And the other thing I think is, from the point of view of Steve Peck, I think he may have been 39, we don't actually know his age. Why would he take such a risk to, um, to start secretly seeing Priscilla just after the baby's born. You know, the baby's not even crawling yet. So I try and put myself in his shoes. I try and say, because I think he may have been married as well, yeah? I don't know that for definite. You tell me, guys. Hi, Leanne. Hope you're well. Morning, Sue. So, hi, Philomena. So I'm trying to understand it. Now, is there a possibility that Steve Peck was seeing Priscilla secretly while she was pregnant? We have to ask this question because it's a bit, you know, her seeing Steve Peck or having a, a fling, which she puts in her book. Uh, I had a brief affair and ended it. But she also writes in her book in page 262 in Elvis and Me, she also writes how much she couldn't stop thinking about Steve Peck and she calls him Mark but and how even when she was at home with Elvis all she could think about was the attention that Steve Peck lavished on her so it makes me think had this been going on for longer because I don't believe that two months after Lisa Marie was born that suddenly there was a romance no there had to be a build-up so a big question I ask is, were they seeing each other through the pregnancy? Now that makes you see things differently as well, because it makes you think it's even more cruel. Because 
obviously Elvis is happy as you can as he can be because he's going to have a child with Priscilla, the woman he just married. Remember, Elvis made a massive commitment to suddenly marry Priscilla. It was a bit out of the blue. In 1966, suddenly he wanted to get married. We don't know the real reason. Some people say because of the colonel, because of Priscilla's parents, because of um, Elvis's father. Who knows the pressures Elvis was under? But he wanted to do the right thing. We could say to tie her down um, and go ahead with the marriage. But there's witnesses that show that Elvis had even been crying before the marriage because he didn't really want to get married. Maybe Elvis had got wind of the fact that she had a roaming eye. There's rumours about Jerry Schilling. Yeah. Um, so maybe Elvis thought, if I don't tie her down now, she's going to flee. She's going to fly the nest. Elvis had brilliant instincts. He knew something was not right. Now, we can't ignore. We can't ignore the fact that Elvis in, 19, you know, when Elvis came back from Germany in 1959, we can't ignore the fact that he had a girlfriend. He'd been seeing girls in Germany, not Priscilla. Priscilla and him were just close friends. Um, came back, he did GI Blues, he was seeing different co-stars like Juliet Prowse. Obviously, the Frank Sinatra show was a massive success. He, he was making albums. And it's well known that as he did more movies, um, he got very close with the co-stars and other people. We've got the, the story with the showgirls. Yeah, we've got, um, he had a crush on Deborah Pageant way back in, is that 56, 1956? Uh, is it Love Me Tender? And we know about June Junico. We know about, um, we were talking about Dorothy Harmon. So jumping forward again, my point is Priscilla did go. I have to, I'm trying to be fair. Priscilla definitely, when she moved to America uh, around 1963, just before, when she, when she was nearly 18, Elvis had a busy life, not just with his career, but with girls, with different women that he liked and was seeing. So Priscilla, 100%, uh, 64, 65, had to put up with the fact that Elvis um, had a full life, even with other women. Now, we have to take this into account when we're bringing things to a point where he gets engaged in 1966 in December. And what was the, I'm, I'm trying to bring a discussion in here. Why did Elvis feel that he needed to get engaged in 1966 in December, when we know he was reluctant to be married? Did he feel that he was losing Priscilla? I ask you this, guys. Um, or was it that they were deep, he had fallen deeply in love with her? Don't forget Priscilla agreed. Now she had accepted Elvis's lifestyle, going off, making the movies, especially in the 60s. Um, she knew he was not faithful, even though I don't think she'd ever actually caught him being unfaithful. I think he only really admitted it with Anne Margaret. But my point is, she knew what she was getting into. It's one of the most common things you guys say to me. She knew what she was getting into. Um, but it doesn't make it okay. It doesn't make it okay. She obviously struggled with that. I'm not trying to defend Priscilla. I'm trying to paint a rounded picture. You guys know that I am truly an Elvis fan. But I want to be fair how we talk about these things. And I get the feeling that Elvis uh, thought that Priscilla had one foot out the door and he was trying to rein her back in and give her what she wanted. I know in 1967, he bought her a horse. Do you know about this, guys? Um, obviously, you know about his horse, uh, the Rising Sun. But he bought her a horse. I'm trying to think of its name. I can't remember its name. Was it Blackie? I, I, I forget the name. These, these horses were show-winning horses. Yeah, and there is video footage showing 
Priscilla on that horse. I'll try and find it actually. Um, so I got a feeling that there was a side of a side to Elvis that didn't want to lose Priscilla. I really believe that. Let me just see if it shows Priscilla on a horse. It's only a short clip. Priscilla, a horse. I'm going to read your comments in it, guys. Let's see if it shows it. I found it, but it is a bit of a very old bit of footage. Priscilla. Presley. I'm pr I know, I'm pretty sure it, it was 1967 because he would watch her from his office window at Greystands. Um, and Elvis had gone off horses because he had a, uh, an, a bit of an is issue when whilst filming, it put him off horses. Then once he, he bought her that horse, um, and he would watch her riding up and down. I think she was pregnant at the time as well. In fact, I'm pretty sure she was. Let's see if it comes up on here. Uh, no. But look, I'll, I'll play this anyway, because then it's short. So, um, so him watching Priscilla riding up and down, that's the horse I'm talking about. That night... It made him want a horse. Yeah. And Elvis really got into the horses and opened and refurbished his stables and called them the House of the Rising Sun. Obviously his favourite horse. Let's just have a, let's look at some of the details on this. My point is, guys, right, so let me pause it. So the Rising Sun was bought in 1967. And died and died in 1986. And then you've got Priscilla's horse Domino. Right, okay. Domino. That was the name. I don't know why I said Blackie. So bought in 1966. Yeah, so this Priscilla's horse. And this spiked an interest in Elvis that made him um, buy everyone a horse. Friends, family, Memphis Mafia, everyone gets a horse. And Elvis was obsessed with finding, with finding the right horse. So he would go out in the middle of the night, knocking on people's doors in search of the right horse. He wanted a particular horse. Uh, I think it was Rising Sun. And he would spend hours and hours. Oh, there we go. There's one with Priscilla here. Let's have a look. So I think this is... Let's just get to that picture. I think this is the horse that Elvis bought Priscilla and looks to me like in 1966. And Elvis would groom and, and brush down these horses. And Elvis spent hours and hours with his horses. He really did love them. That's Priscilla. Uh, let me just go back a bit. So this is, I think this is Elvis on Priscilla's horse. He would brush them down after a long run when they were hot. He would cool them down and he would spend hours and hours and hours with his horses. So it was a, a passion of his that he loved. Look, anyway, let's get back to the topic. The topic is um, trying to understand um, why Elvis made the decision to finally get engaged and then to go on to get married then to understand why Priscilla was unfaithful but also why Steve Peck took the risk of having an affair with Priscilla knowing that she had just had a baby and whether or not Priscilla had secretly been seeing Steve Peck through the pregnancy because it doesn't make any sense that suddenly two months after Priscilla, uh, Lisa Marie was born that they were having an affair, it wouldn't have happened like that. It would have been something that slowly unfolded and that my guess is that she was seeing him or at least had a crush on him and him a crush on her through the pregnancy. Now, I just want to fill my coffee up. Now, what do you guys, do you think that it went on through the pregnancy? I'm asking you that question. I'm just going to top up my coffee, guys.
Okay. And then the other point I was saying was then once Elvis did catch her, obviously he would have gone crazy. Uh, then what leads her to do it again in 71 with Mike Stone, the karate champion, the karate instructor? What? There must have been something up. She must have been either very lonely or she wanted to get on with her life. We've heard her say that she had no sense of herself, that she wanted to uh, spread her wings and, and see what's out there. Yeah. So let me just read your comments. Uh, so let's have a look. Hi, Diana. Right. OK, let me go back on your comments, guys. She had stayed there, so knew that she was getting into. Maybe she thought she could change him, but still cheated first. Now, remember, Sue, I'm not on Priscilla's side here. We're just having an open debate discussion on this. So, yeah, Sue, I agree. Um, I still think, to be fair, that, you know, we all know that Elvis um, found it difficult to be faithful and loyal. I mean, I do believe that once she got pregnant and engaged, that Elvis was faithful and loyal for that small bit of time. I really believe that, 66 December, till he catches her being unfaithful. I do believe Elvis tried to be loyal, tried to be a, a good husband, and then once Lisa Marie was born, wanted to be a good father. And even the Memphis Mafia have said this. So... Again, I'm being fair to Elvis here. Right. Hi, Lu. Right. Hi, Leanne. So let's go. Right. To have a healthy and long-term relationship, you have to have things in common. It's not good basis. Um, in one part that has all the freedom and the other is restricted. It's very true, Diana. It's very true. Now, I, I get the feeling that Elvis thought that Priscilla was the settling down type um, that he would move her to Gracelands or whichever house they were in, because we know that it wasn't just Graceland. And he was hoping that eventually if they did marry, because I do think that there was an intention there one day that Elvis would marry her. I think he hoped that she would have, you know, get pregnant, have the baby, um, then be the, be the stay at home wife that maybe had more children. But I think Elvis quite quickly realized that Priscilla wasn't going to take to it. She doesn't, she wasn't really, from what I can see, she wasn't happy that she got pregnant. She felt by being pregnant, it freed Elvis up even more to be more unfaithful, to, uh, to go off and be away from her more often uh, because she was more stuck at home. She couldn't follow him around to the different things, you know, the movie sets, etc. And he would go off with the Memphis Mafia and the staff doing whatever he was doing. So I feel that her getting pregnant probably made their relationship much worse and made her feel much more isolated. And being Priscilla as we know her now, who you can tell she's naturally very ambitious. Without sounding rude, she really fancied men a lot. So she felt restricted that Elvis was, had been, that she was really tied to Elvis because I really do believe that um, she, um, how can I put it in a nice way? She wanted to, oh God, how can I say it without making you lot laugh? She wanted to sow her oats, even though she was pregnant and she was married to Elvis. There was a part of her that just wanted to get out there and, and meet people like Mike Stone. Sexy, Adonis men, strong men. Yeah. So it was frustrating for her. Um, so anybody that got close to her, anyone that, who was allowed to get close to her, like Steve Peck, the dance instructor, was a temptation for Priscilla. Um, so let's have a look. But Louis, the rules of the game were clear. She knew. I, guys, the most common thing you say to me is that she knew what she was getting into. She definitely did, 100%. She was getting with the most famous man in the world and all the women in the world loved him. Uh, the attention he got was probably more than any man has ever got ever. But that doesn't mean it was easy for her. Knowing what you're getting into doesn't mean it was easy. 
come on, let's be fair. She must have went, she must have gone through hell. It must have been torture. Put yourself in her shoes. Put yourself in her shoes. Yeah. So, you know, remember, I'm no Priscilla fan, but I'm not stupid. I'm not stupid. Uh, right, let's keep going. It was a relationship that didn't work between two people who had little or nothing in common. You could force love. What they had wasn't enough. He fulfilled his duty and promise. He a hundred percent. He fulfilled his promise. Hundred uh, percent. Not so sure about duty, but he did do what he said he would do. He did do that. Um, yes, she knew. She, I, I, Lorna. I completely agree. Priscilla loved money, fame, success, big time, big time. A very cunning, intelligent, smart woman that knew when she got older and knew what she wanted. I agree. Hi, Colleen. Um, let's have a look. Um, okay. Uh, I will all right. I don't want to miss it. Right. I don't want to miss any of your comments. Um, have you ever noticed that whatever it had something to do with Priscilla Elvis? was the happies. In this case, the horses, whenever he wanted something, it was harmful. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I don't get the point. Have I read it wrong? Have you ever noticed that whenever it had something to do with Priscilla, Elvis was the happiest? In this case, the horses, whenever he wanted something. It, all right, I see what you mean. Um, right, okay. So... I'd have to know what he wanted. I'd have to know your point is, okay, what did he want that she was against? Is that your point? So let's have a look. Um, hi, Lorna. I would always think that the marriage was forced and she knew what she was in for and the money was king. Look at how she has been since the divorce and his death. Guys, trust me, I have hundreds of things uh, where I'm not happy, the things that Priscilla has done hundreds of things there's so many things that are seriously wrong that priscilla did to elvis um and after elvis's death how elvis was his memory has been treated also with the divorce settlements the way she was unfaithful was barbaric yeah and uh but that doesn't turn off her point of view how she saw things what she went through yeah so even because I completely believe that she encouraged Elvis to allow her to, to move to Graceland big time, big time. She wanted it. She was going to get Elvis. She was going to keep plugging until she managed to get to Elvis. So I see that totally, guys. Um, so we've got Jay. Hi, Jane. Right, Luan, I just got a video clip I've never seen before. Elvis singing Silent Night shows then and now that Lisa Marie was a little Christmas time and of today. Elvis being cut off. Thank you. Right. Because it was a good time for him to get engaged, at some point, Elvis Presley has to make important life decisions. I, I agree. I, I agree. He was, how old would he be? And he was... Was he, uh, do you know, I should know this. How old was Elvis when he got engaged? Was he 30? 30? Um, um, let's have a look. Let's see if we can Google it. Is it 30, 31? Do any of you know? It? Right, someone's pulled up. Right, sorry. How old was Elvis? when he got i could say married can't i married and then we knock a year off in it let's have a look right here we go um so i didn't say the age it just says when come on how old he was born in 35. They got right, let's work it out. Come on, you, you guys are probably telling me now. Uh, morning. So he was born, he was born in 35. So he got engaged 67. So I mean married at 67. 
So 32, yeah? Okay. So just in answer to Diana's response, it is, there's only a little bit of milk there. It's enough to make a tea. All right, you got some cream. So my wife's awake. Um, so, yeah, 32. It's time to commit. It's time to settle. It's time to have kids. He had made Priscilla wait a long time. So I think you're right, Diana. So I think um, they lived together for so long without getting married was perhaps a reason. Yeah. Let's have a look. Just been watching Ronda's Priscilla. Yeah, I've already watched Ronda's thing. I'm, I'm going to do, I'm going to go through that stuff. A lot of what Ronda went through, we've already been through. Uh, it's more the updating that I want to do. Uh, I'll be honest with you, going through court documents is doesn't turn me on, guys. Uh, I find it boring. But I do want to keep up with it. I do want to keep up to date with it. So I'm going to keep you updated with Bridget Cruz and Priscilla and the Counter Sue. And even the thing, there's been an update on the Graceland scammer as well. We'll talk about that as well. But it isn't on my high on my priority list. I think Sean, uh, Rhonda's channel is very different than mine. I do tend to just do, I flitter around to different topics, yeah? Whether it's the Memphis Mafia or the girlfriends or Priscilla's boyfriends or just, I tend to flitter around. I, I like us to have a chat. Uh, I don't, I'm not really a sit here and read documents person. It's not really what I'm about, even though I will do it. What do you think, Raw? Raw and Neko? Uh, Rora, do you think I would like reading documents on the laptop? No. No, it's not my thing, is it? Right, let's have a look. I like just talking about general stuff, really. I do like doing a bit of research, though. I do like finding out new information. I do. Um, it's like the Linda Thompson um, live stream we did yesterday morning, I think it was. It was hour, I think it was quite long. It was like an hour and 40 minutes. Now, I really liked that. But, um, I, th I think she may be watching now. Um, and let me just uh, check my messages. So, uh, Melissa, if you're watching, Melissa, um, thank you, by the way, for the information. Melissa gave me some information and it got my attention. So then we ended up doing, I think, a really good live stream yesterday morning. Um, about Linda Thompson, and that we're trying to get to the truth of Linda Thompson. Now, you guys know that I like Linda Thompson. Um, I think she had a good effect on Elvis. So we get we get an alternative view of Linda Thompson from Melissa, and I've, I I learned a lot. I did, ch and my views on Linda Thompson have slightly changed. They have. There's things that have happened with Linda Thompson I didn't know about because of Melissa. Uh, any of you that send me into information that make me change my mind, I love it. Love it. Right, let's have a look. Um, so I got, uh, let's have a look. There we are. Let's keep looking. I don't blame her for wanting her own life. This is Colleen. Uh, she knew what life was so. She should have left before the marriage and then a baby. Uh, this is a very common comment I get. People are like, you know, when it was going wrong, she should have got out. Uh, definitely shouldn't have got pregnant. But, you know, you've got, you got to sort of put, again, put yourself in her shoes. She's moved from a very normal life, a very normal life. She was, let's, let's face it, guys. She was never going to, how can I put it nicely? She was never going to be famous. She was never going to be wealthy. So, that's a temptation in itself. She knew by moving over to Graceland that her whole life would, would change forever, forever, um, financially and fame-wise, because don't forget, she did get 15 minutes of fame when she waved Elvis off at the airport. The press found out about Priscilla quite quickly. It wouldn't surprise me if it was all staged and uh, if Priscilla had contacted the press herself possible isn't it guys we've all seen the pictures um so would 
would it how many of you could have turned your back on that opportunity the opportunity to be part of elvis's life you know a 16 17 year old girl with the with those sort of doors opening for her how many of you could have said no so i keep trying to put myself in her shoes um my father was forced to marry my mother this is diana they lived together for two years and it worked well this was in the mid 70s but society was not like today it was a scandal not to be married do you know what that's such a good point diana it's such a good point um that people if they didn't really get married by the time they were 20 were in the 50s and 60s and 70s and i think even 80s were were looked at as being on the shelf left behind so there was an urgency with the teenage girls 16 17 to meet the right man and get married even the men were looking for innocent girls because they didn't want to marry a girl that had been around so different pressures wasn't it i think right melissa i think her parents were pressing elvis before she even moved to memphis hi melissa um Now, Melissa, I've read quite a lot of Child Bride. Uh, I know the alternative version of what happened in with with um, Priscilla, even before she moved to Germany, but once she did move to Germany, and that there were, it was all pre-planned, and the parents were involved, especially the mother, and the the, the truth the true story with Curry Grant is like sex for favors, if you know, introduce me to Elvis type thing. And that she dressed like and looked like Deborah Pageant to try and get Elvis's attention because she had heard that Elvis had a crush on Deborah Pageant, which I think is true. Deborah Pageant, beautiful girl. Let's just show you a picture of her. Um, so this is good what we're doing, guys. We're trying to analyze together um, how Elvis was thinking how um priscilla was thinking we're trying to put ourselves in their shoes miss deborah pageant beautiful beautiful girl and it's what we've heard is that the reason elvis really liked her but bridget uh, deborah pageant's parents were very controlling over her so i don't blame them and Elvis had the image of a rock and roll rebel, yeah? And the parents were not going to let Elvis get with Deborah Padgett, but I think they actually did really like each other, maybe even love. I think Elvis, when he stopped filming Love Me Tender in 1956, was a bit brokenhearted. So from the point of view of this book, Child Bride, and every time I say Child Bride, I want to say she was never a child bride, Priscilla, because Elvis married her just before she turned 22. So the title of this book actually is a bit cruel to Elvis because she was never a child bride. Um, and Lorraine, I don't know if Lorraine's on. Lorraine always reminds me, whenever you mention the word child bride, um, say Priscilla's date of birth. She says it to me all the time. Lorraine, let me just check that you're there. Uh, I think Lorraine probably is there. Let's have a look. Lorraine, are you on? um so lorraine always let's have a look let's go to lorraine's message i love lorraine she sends me so much stuff it just it makes me cough so she says it here um when you bring up priscilla <laughs> lorraine i love your passion when you bring up priscilla priscilla wasn't a child bride mention her birthday may the 24th 1945 then tell them to do their research to prove that we are right that she moved into graceland just before 1983, uh, in several, she moved into Graceland at 18 years old. And I think it says here in October. I don't know the actual month that she moved to Graceland. And then it says she was just about to turn 22. They didn't have sex till they got married. Lorraine, are you there? So Lorraine, I have told them May the 24th, 1945 is the date of birth of Priscilla. I love Lorraine. She's, she cracks me up, Lorraine. She's brilliant. Right. So as I was saying, you've got Deborah Pageant. Like I said, this is how she looked. 
and from the book child bride this is priscilla trying to look in our opinion like deborah Padden. Hey, priscilla looks good there i actually would say that deborah is more beautiful do you agree guys let's look at this picture and then let's go over to Deborah Pageant. Pageant. I think Deborah is much classier and more beautiful, more naturally beautiful. Do you agree, guys? Anyway, let's carry on. I want to carry on going through your comments. Um, okay. Now, remember, we're having a bit of a debate today, guys. Um, from the moment, right, let's have a look. I don't want to miss your comments because some of them are, uh, not so, because like Diana is saying some very good things, and I want to get get it out there so we can debate. I can understand her to a certain extent. We all developed to be happy, but she could have taken college course like the rest of us. Let's have a look. Uh, I thought she did take. A, did she not take a course? I don't know. I'm not fully aware of her education. Karma was a way of getting you in the end. Look at what happened when she spent 23 years with Garibaldi. No, Colleen. Elvis was the love of her life. Elvis was the love of my life. You're right, Colleen. Um, she cheated. Hi, we hi. hi, it's over there. Over there. Morning, morning, beautiful sun. Tino is awake. Oh, oh, he's gone upstairs. Let's see if um if we get a bit longer before they jump on me. James, where is your Elvis shirt? <laughs> um, James, I got your message. <laughs> I got your message. You said because I don't wear Elvis um, clothing that I'm obviously not a true fan. I love you, James. I'm sending you love, my friend. Um, right, let's have a look. I'm still trying to read comments. Uh, okay, where are we? Luan, I just got a bit. Oh, I've got that. Uh, my father was four. All right, we've done that. Let's have a look. Yeah, thanks, guys, for telling me his age. Thanks, Teresa. Thanks, Lorna. So we've got. From the moment Lisa Marie Presley was born, the marriage changed, and Elvis himself said it so often. He was wrong about Priscilla. He only realised this when he had other women. Um, uh, and Elvis loved Linda. Um, I agree. Elvis realised he was wrong about Priscilla. He did. He did. And unfortunately... He learned the hardest way possible, and that is the way that she was unfaithful to him with Mike Stone was, I don't think it could have been worse. I think the circumstances with Mike Stone, public humiliation, embarrassment that he went through, the way that she demanded a divorce, the way that she went marching down the road with Mike Stone and Lisa Marie was as cruel as it gets, as cruel as it gets. So unfortunately, Elvis really was taught a horrible lesson by that woman and he Daddy. and he knew it Daddy. yes Daddy. Mike. Daddy. of course say hello to everyone hello say hi team elvis hello hi team elvis yes team elvis hello. yeah hang on here they come yours is down here as well yeah i am um doing a live at the moment right there you go There's... on your pc yes on yours yes on your new one yep I'm on the new laptop, guys. I love it. Right, there we go. That's we're in my kitchen, guys. Uh, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Um, yeah, you do, have, Tina. You do have to. You do have to be quiet, guys. The it's just not come down and get it, yes. All right, okay. It should be just there. It's there on the there where I sit on the table. Got it? Okay, you got it? Okay, guys. I won't be long. I'm just gonna I'm just having a chat with Team Elvis. Um he thought she was the one that was going to change Elvis. Right. He thought she was the one that was going to change Elvis. That's Coley. Right. 
And right, Diane, a man who loves also likes to come home. Elvis stayed away. He was away a lot, guys. You can't ignore that. Let's have a look. Right, Colleen, her parents let her go with the understanding that he would marry her. I think that's probably true. I think that's probably true. Diane, um, let's have a look. Sorry, it keeps jumping up. When I scroll down, it jumps up, which is annoying because I'm trying to read your comments. Um, let's have a look. So from the moment Lisa Marie Presley was born, the marriage changed and Elvis himself said it so often. He was wrong about Priscilla. He only realised this when he had other women after her. Elvis loved Linda. All right, we've just read that. But well, now we did this We did this video yesterday morning um, with Melissa's help. Um, she, Melissa gave me great information. And I'm seeing the Linda Thompson relationship different now. I'm seeing that the first year there was love and Elvis um, loved being with her. We know that she was a spender and that he showered her with gifts and she loved that. But I do think Linda was another person that was very ambitious, very career minded. She very quickly went on um, to do some TV things. I know that she had been a model and a beauty queen. And I do think there's more to the Linda Thompson story than, than, than we think. I, do, I, like you guys, think she's beautiful and lovely and um, I love her interviews about Elvis. I think the way she speaks about Elvis is very eloquent. But now I've done the video that Melissa uh, has given me loads of information on. I do see Linda differently now. I do. I still like her. I think she's amazing. But I don't think she was um, the person that maybe many of you think she was. And I'm not saying that to, against her because I really like Linda. So I just think there's more to learn about Linda. Uh, Tracy, Diana. I agree. So many times he avoided going back to Graceland instead went partying with the guys in Palm Springs. He obviously not in a rush to spend time with her. It does seem that way, Tracy. It does seem that way. And come on, that must have been difficult for, for Priscilla. It must have been. We, you know, we have to at least accept that. It doesn't matter what our feelings are for Priscilla. We have to try and see the other side of things, put ourselves in their shoes. I really believe that. Otherwise, we're not being fair. Because I won't whitewash Elvis. I won't do that. That's not fair. You know, Elvis was a human being. He made mistakes. He had, um, what's the word? He had te he had serious temptation, didn't he? Serious. The m most, more temptation than any man has ever had, I would say. So that must have been difficult to any girlfriend that Elvis had. Not just to Priscilla. To any girlfriend. Um, let's have a look. Priscilla was an was awful to Lisa. Elvis, money and sex, men for reason. I do you know what? There's many many of you have given me uh, information about how uh, Priscilla was a bad mother, and you know my views on Scientology, that whole thing. And it does come across to me that Priscilla put herself first when it comes to um, Lisa Marie. Even I, I've learned that. The last summer of Elvis's life, Priscilla was living at Graceland's for the whole summer, for the whole summer. And now that doesn't add up to me. Why is Priscilla allowing Lisa Marie to live at Graceland's for the whole summer? And the only thing I can understand is that she, um, she Priscilla wanted to get on with her life, her boyfriend, her career, her future, her ambitions. And by dropping her off at Graceland's, it gave her a summer to do to live her life in a I think in quite a selfish way and, and you know guys there's no way that Priscilla ever should have put uh, Lisa Marie in Scientology completely against that guys yeah Deborah was beautiful wasn't she Colleen um yeah I think Deborah was more beautiful than Priscilla I really do believe that um Yep, Eric, you say she was a little square, but um, isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? Doesn't that make you um, respect her more? That's, I would have liked Deborah Pageant. I would have liked the fact that she, she came across very, very decent, well brought up. 
Right, let me just keep going back through these comments. Okay. Um, Sandra, it, uh, Tracy, it was all good pre R. She did the same to Baz Awards, Smart and Camera. No, I, don't forget the Priscilla that the Priscilla that took over Gracelands. I call her like the Emperor of Gracelands, who took over everything in was it nineteen eighty two. She couldn't believe that everything had fallen into place, including Vernon passing away. Um, that she had got herself onto this podium of success. Of I saved Graceland. I opened the museum on behalf of Lisa, which we know is not correct. It's not true. Many factors before Lisa, before Priscilla came back on the scene, were happening behind the scenes with Memphis. Um, with Vernon, um, it was well underway. The opening of a museum uh, was well underway. And I keep saying this, the deed of trust, the charge that was placed on Graceland, call, um, the deed of trust created, this allowed Priscilla to demand uh, a charge to be placed, a lien to be placed on the building so that Priscilla would get her second divorce settlement we know that for her to open the second divorce settlement, she had to accuse Elvis of fraud because she had already signed and sealed the first divorce settlement. And I believe that once this lien, this charge was placed on Graceland, and it was for a lot of money, guys, it was 1.5 million, as far as I know, um, and, a, and a percentage of the royalties and six months, 6,000 a month spousal payments. I'm pretty sure that once the lawyers, the attorneys managed to get this deed of trust charge lien placed that Priscilla then had ultimate power, ultimate power. So when they were discussing Gracelands, whether it would be sold or not, discussing the opening of the museum, which was already at hand, Priscilla was in there going, yeah, I'm making these decisions. And I believe that once Priscilla had become the main trustee on behalf of Lisa Marine, I think Vernon probably very reluctantly had to make Priscilla um, the main trustee on behalf of Lisa Marie, not only because of the lien, the charge, the deed of trust that was placed on that building, but also because she was the mother of Lisa Marie. So I think Vernon was between a rock and a hard place that this woman that really had betrayed Elvis and had, had been very cruel to Elvis in this second divorce settlement that was atrociously greedy, I, I think El, uh, Vernon was given almost no choice than to allow Priscilla to become the boss. The boss. Priscilla couldn't believe it was all falling into place in favour of her. She became the emperor of Graceland, ultimate power. And this is why I believe that a lot of the Memphis Mafia, and people like Jerry Schilling, basically have been kissing Priscilla's ass, in my opinion, for 40 years because she was the boss. She had to say yes to everything. It was only once she sold 85% of Elvis Presley Enterprises, then suddenly she wasn't so much the boss. There was another boss, yeah? And this has carried on. And I think every time Elvis Presley Enterprises changed hands, Priscilla got a lump sum of money, a very large amount of money. But anyway, we're going off subject. Uh, let's keep going where we are. Dixie Locke was a beautiful lady, inside and out, lots of integrity. Yeah, I've watched her interviews. She was lovely. I love Dixie. Uh, I think you can tell which women were not right for Elvis by how they treated, how the, how the Memphis Mafia treated them. If they were good, the Memphis Mafia didn't like them because they felt threatened. That's a good point. I think Elvis was unfaithful. I think Elvis was unfavorable because he was always looking for the one. He probably felt insecure, not knowing for sure which woman really cared for him and the ones that were around him. <clears throat> right, let me, Melissa, let me read that again. I like to absorb it. I think Elvis was unfavorable because he was always looking for the one. He probably felt insecure, not knowing for sure. Morning. Uh, that's my dark daughter, Talia. Um, 
She's 16 years old. Um, so, no. How old are you? 17. Yeah. My 17-year-old daughter. Uh, um, but you can avoid... All right, so we are. Melissa. I think she was unfaithful because he was always looking for the one. I think Elvis was unfaithful because he was always looking for the one. He probably felt insecure, not knowing for sure which woman really cared for him and which ones were around for benefits. Mm. I'm not sure if insecure is the right word. I think that he didn't trust women. That's what I think. He didn't trust them. And generally, he was right. If he gave them, I don't know what's the right word. But I don't really like to use the word freedom. But it seems to me that when they got freedom, that they were naughty. They were up to no good. Already we found out that Linda Thompson, from what I can see, from the information I've been given, had two other boyfriends or affairs while she was with Elvis. But but from her point of view, she knew that Elvis had other girlfriends. It's cl very clear that Elvis had other girlfriends when he was seeing Linda Thompson. So, you know, they're both in the wrong, aren't they, guys? They're both up to no good. Elvis was no angel. Um... Uh, and then it says, uh, which woman really cared for him and which ones were around for the benefits. But come on, guys. We're talking about very well, a, a very wealthy man with a very wealthy lifestyle, with massive income, a very generous man. Yeah. So, yes, they were all of the girlfriends were around and getting benefits. And I think probably most of them wanted the benefits. Now, come on. If you met a man and he was very wealthy and if you and you loved him you're still going to let him shower you with gifts and give you loads of things it doesn't make you a bad person you're not a bad person to accept gifts i don't think so you know these are normal people that have low income that hadn't didn't really have much so elvis comes along he's offering them to buy him a house and an apartment give him a car buy him a wardrobe any jewelry they want take them anywhere take them on holidays so I will say this to you guys, just because you accept gifts doesn't make you a bad person. So I don't see Linda as a bad person for accepting gifts. But what I will say is this, and this was mentioned to me, I think, by Melissa. If you're still accepting gifts when you split up from them, I think you're being greedy. But I still understand why people accept them. Because these people were never going to be able to afford these gifts themselves. Yeah. Elvis was one of the very rare few people that could just afford to give his girlfriends and friends and family and the Memphis Mafia very, very expensive gifts. Um, I can understand that you're looking... Right, Diana, I can understand that you're looking for answers, but you can't avoid Scientology. She changed the entire behaviour and her wording after she was in the car. I agree. Diana, I am completely against Scientology. It was disgusting that she was put in there. And the whole point of this channel is to look for answers. That's why we're called Defending Elvis Presley. It has to be the point. But it can't all be very, very one-sided. We have to see both sides of the coin. And then we, together with Team Elvis, will come to our truth. That's what I think. Um, so, let's have a look. She had, she now has financial problems like everyone who has in the cult. She definitely does. She has no idea when it comes to spending. She's clueless, which is very proved by the Bridget Cruz current lawsuit where Priscilla agreed to these stupid things of selling her name, image and likeness and this 80, 20%, 80% deal that Bridget Cruz promised her that she was going to make her rich and pay her tax bill and create um, a cosmetic business and lip balm business, whatever it was. Come on, Priscilla messed up with Bridget Cruz. She messed up. She's in for a fight with Bridget Cruz. Um, and Priscilla should have known better than to agree to all those things and then just change her mind and think, and think by changing her mind, it was all going to go away. It was never going to go away. Bridget Cruz was always going to chase after her money. So Priscilla should have took advice before she agreed to those contracts. I think it was four contracts. 
And um, I know she's counter suing and she's claiming elder abuse, but she's got a steep hill to climb, a steep hill. Priscilla is in deep trouble, I believe, when it comes to lawsuits. Um, she had so many throwing themselves at He had so many throwing himself at him. He got the pick of the girls today and picked the ones that didn't feel threatened by, uh, who was right for Elvis. I think that's right. I think that's right, Sue. I don't think Elvis liked to feel threatened. Um, I watched um, a video this morning, actually, and last night, and I played it to you guys. Um, was it Diana? Let me just... Was it Diana that we played last night? And I caught the tail end of the Diana video talking about Elvis, why they split up. And she said that she... Elvis had introduced her to Burt Reynolds and gave her her first movie role. This is how amazing Elvis is. Diana wanted to get into the movies. Elvis encouraged her uh, to do it. And Elvis was friends with Burt Reynolds. So Elvis walked over to Burt Reynolds' movie set and said, this is Diana. Can you help her? And Burt Reynolds was like, yeah, go on then, go ahead. I'll, I'll give her a chance. And Somehow, uh, Diana ended up being on the front page of a magazine. When Elvis saw um, Diana on the front page of, with Burt Reynolds on this magazine, even though it was a harmless picture, um, Elvis said, that's it, you and me are finished. Elvis didn't want to know her anymore because he, he felt betrayed that she had took, he had helped her and that she had allowed this picture be, to be taken of Burt Reynolds and her, and it went around the world. So... Elvis wanted loyalty, didn't he? He wanted loyalty. Do any of you know about this? Um, let's have a look. Um, okay, let's just try and... Sorry, let's have, I can understand. Right, let's have a look. So we go. Let me just get to the right. It really cut Vernon when Dixie wouldn't come to the funeral. Wasn't I think Vernon was close to Dixie, wasn't he? This from Sandra. I think Sandra's the one that told me off for um, asking people to become members. Is that right, Sandra? <laughs> Guys, be members. I love you. Oh yes, I forgot to say we've got a new member. I must. I always mention new members. Du -du 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 -du. Right, some of that. Guys, I love you being members. But I always say it's not because I want your money. It's only a pound a month. Someone said to me, I haven't got a pound to give you. I think most people have got a pound, haven't they? Shh. But uh, let's have a look. It was Tina Wetner. Tina Wetner, thank you so much for becoming a member. Obviously, the Bex has just joined as well. And Jane Elvis Presley has just joined. So I really, I, seriously, guys, I really appreciate. And then we've also got Elizabeth, Kathleen, Pat, and El and Elvis Girl 1977 and Diana, all recent members. Thank you guys. Seriously, it does mean a lot to me. I, and I, I am gonna do uh, once we hit 100 members, we are gonna do one-to-one -one, uh, membership live streams as well. Um, and I don't have favoritism for members. This is what someone said to me. I love my subscribers and my members. The same, the same. I just want to build up some members. I'm proud of this channel. I'm proud of defending Elvis Presley. Fans want the truth. So please don't take things wrong when I say to you, buy me a coffee, or when I say um, to join up for a pound a month. And uh, I think, I don't know if you know this, but I think YouTube take um, 50 pence of it anyway, guys. So it's not giving me loads of money. It's, it's pennies. It literally is pennies. Um, so look, Dixie seems to, to like over righteous a petite person to me in interviews. She comes off that way. Okay, Melissa, I have, I, I'd have to do some research on Dixie. Um, Priscilla thinks she's better than everybody. Then we've got, oh, her best friend, Jack. Diana says, oh, her best friend, Jack Sodden, is surely already preparing for the comeback. Weeds never die. I know Jack Sodden. I know quite a lot about him. He was um, Morgan Maxfield, 
the guy that died in the plane crash that Priscilla was engaged to around 1980. He was like his office boy. And he eventually stepped in with Priscilla and they carried on this, the process of turning um, Graceland's into a living museum that had already been started before by the Memphis Council and by Vernon. So they should not take full credit for it. That is not fair. Priscilla is not the reason Graceland became a museum, in my opinion, nor it was not sold. It was all being planned beforehand. Right, let's have a look. Teresa loves a Margaret. Uh, right, let's keep the, just jump down. So sorry, guys. I, I'm, every time I scroll through the comments, it jumps up. It's annoying. Elvis loved to shower people with gifts. Shows the type of person he was, and that makes it even worse. Some people took advantage. Well, I think. Definitely certain ones took advice. They milked the cow. Yeah. Um, come on. If I was, if I was a multimillionaire, I would shower people with gifts. It's very easy to be generous when you've got millions and millions and millions and millions. Um, but yes, Elvis was extremely generous. Didn't like having too much money. Just wanted to give it all away. Even to strangers felt guilty that he had so much money. That was his kind heart. He was so kind hearted that to him, it wasn't even his money. It was everyone else's money. So money can bring out the worst in people, guys. We all know that, don't we? Money and sex can bring out the worst in people. Um, Elvis really wanted both things, a compliant, faithful wife at home, raising a large brood of kids but he also wanted occasional to be free life on and a single guy that never works out well you're probably right tracy now the word compliant I think a bit too much but i get your point i get your point hello why not let's have a look Right, let's have a look. Right, say hello to everyone. Have a say Team Elvis. Right, all careful. Right, say Team Elvis. Uh, why has your YouTube disappeared? Because something moved it. Oh, is that right? <laughs> let's have a look. Um, you, oops, YouTube. See, kids, we're doing it from home. Uh, why is there no YouTube on your phone? Because I, ah. I don't, I don't know. Mm. Right, let's have a look. Um, let's see if we can make YouTube come on your phone. Should we sing? Ska, Should we ska. sing? Zip, ska. Zippity doo da, zippity day. Zippity doo da, zippity day. Okay. Mm. Right, there we are. You see that? You see that? When the circle gets big, it'll work. You have to press it. Take that upstairs. When the circle gets big, see that? The blue one, when it goes all the way around, you click it and it'll work. Um, right. Let's have a look. We are. So, hello, Louis. Love your channel and what you are doing. Thanks, Linda. Are you, Linda, are you new? Linda, are you new? Linda Bain. Thank you for that compliment. That's so kind. Our channel, Team Elvis. Our channel. How's Eric this morning? Oh, don't worry, Sandra. I love you. Sandra, I'm going to get an Elvis t-shirt just for you. Um... Guys, I don't mind you being honest with me and t and telling me off. It's okay. I, sometimes I find it quite funny. Uh, right. Let's have a look. Right. So let's have a look. Where are we? 
I think it was the Hawaiian wedding song. I'm not sure. I don't remember exactly which song, but I know it's true. Yes. It's working, yeah? See? Now what do you want me to put on, yeah? Uh, you, 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 I put YouTube on. Where is it? Uh, 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 uh. Oh, no, it's not on yet. Got to wait for that to fill up. When that fills up, then you click on it. Um, right, let's have a look. Um, okay. Right, okay, we're at, we come to the end of the comments. Now, I'll be honest with you guys, I had this conversation, I think me, me and Melissa mentioned it. I personally think, well done, I think Elvis would have been a completely different person if he had not become famous. I truly believe that Elvis, not famous, would have had a lovely family, a beautiful wife, a lovely home. He would have been a great dad, a great grandfather. I really believe that, and I don't mean this horribly, I really think that Elvis becoming famous shortened his life. There's no way I think Elvis would have died at 42 if he had not become famous. You've got to turn that down, please. I really believe that. Now, I also think this. Tina, that's too loud. Come on. God, kids. Tina, I'll just take it off for you. Come on. He's ignoring me. He never listened. My son... Never listens to me. Doesn't matter. See, look, he wants food. He doesn't care what I say. I'm hungry. Oh, it's okay, Sandra. Yeah, all right, I'm going to come and sort you out in a minute. Uh, I also believe this. I think we're going to have to come back to this. Cause I'm going to sort him out now. Honey. With, with ham? With ham. ham. I want, I want, I want two. <laughs> he wants two ham sandwiches. <laughs> uh, right, I, I want to go on to discuss no, something honey. else. No honey. No honey. Uh, I want to discuss something else with you guys. Uh, I think there was, uh, before Linda Thompson, Elvis, and the way he was with women, and I think there's an after Linda Thompson, Elvis, and the way he was with women. I think before Linda Thompson, he was like a big teenager, excited, um, you know, always looking for um, a new challenge. Yeah. Very boyish quality. But I think after Linda Thompson, Elvis had been hurt, seriously hurt after Priscilla, actually. Um, and there was a different Elvis, a much more serious Elvis, an Elvis that was searching, an Elvis that was always disappointed with many of the girlfriends that he had um, after, after Priscilla. And I think he kept getting disappointed again and again and again and again, including Linda Thompson. And I'm not speaking for Ginger Olden because I, I need to do more research on Ginger Olden. She, Ginger Olden seems lovely to me. Uh, but he was too old for her. She was too young to really properly understand that she was in this whirlwind. She does seem like a very decent, beautiful woman. Um, but that's for another subject, isn't it? That's for another day, really. Um, so I hope I haven't come across as being one-sided for Priscilla, because I'm not. I am... I have serious issues. I am very, very upset with Priscilla. Very upset. She has done so many things wrong again and again and again and again and again. I'm very upset with her. But I won't ignore what she went through. I won't act as if it was all Elvis's, I mean, sorry, all, the, everything is Priscilla's fault. I won't do that. Come on. Do any of us really want to do that? We have to be fair. We have to be fair. But she has made some extremely serious mistakes and is still making them now. To this day, she is making very serious mistakes. I'm disgusted with the Priscilla movie. I'm disgusted with um, the fact that after the Priscilla film was made, she carried on with her career, promoting herself around the world, signing autographs for cash just after 
Lisa Marie died. I'm disgusted by that. And I, if I was sat here with Priscilla right now, I would say to her, what the hell are you doing? What the hell are you doing? Your daughter recently died and you're going around the world trying to make money, trying to further your career. Are you crazy? How cruel is that? I would say that to her face. But I would also say, um, you need to retire and spend time with your grandkids. Yeah, I would also say that. And I think Riley Q is between a rock and a hard place. Now, Melissa mentioned this to me today. Riley Q is stuck because it is her grandmother. She wants to come across as being fair to the public. I think Riley's a lovely person. I think she's too soft. She's got a, a great husband. We love Tupelo. Tupelo is beautiful. But Riley, I personally think, is way too soft with Priscilla. Way too soft. I do think Riley's heart is in the right place. I really do. And I think things will turn out fine for Riley and the twins. Now, Priscilla, I think she's headed for a very rough ride. A very rough ride. I think Priscilla, a lot of things are going to get exposed about Priscilla now over the next year. Year, 18 months. And the public are going to get to see the true Priscilla. And unfortunately, Priscilla that has a very, in my opinion, has a very dark side. Um, and there's many things that are going to come out that expose Priscilla. And I don't mean that in a hateful way. I'm not being hateful. I'm not inciting hate. I'm saying that she keeps making the wrong decisions and it's all based on money, 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 money. And it's going to bite her on the ass. It's already biting her on the ass already. She needs to rein it in, become a grandmother, forget business, admit her wrongdoing, admit her mistakes, Admit that she was unfaithful. Admit that divorce settlement was cruel. Admit that she wasn't completely the reason that Grace Sands was saved. Uh, when she starts admitting all the wrongdoing, she may get some of the Elvis fans back on side. They may start feeling sorry for her. Because ultimately, shouldn't we feel sorry for her because she's messed up so bad? So, let me just read your message. But it happens very often that people, something in each other, um, cannot understand. Maybe they saw something. So we've got Lisa's death was so shocking and poor children, just when they needed their gran. Yeah, Tracy, I agree. They need her now and she's off with her career. Yep, yeah, we know our Margaret is lovely, Teresa. Um, I never saw the Priscilla movie, but Danny Smith, son of Billy Smith, and Priscilla came out looking like the aggressive one. It, that film was terrible. Horrible film. Don't watch it, guys. It's rubbish. I think he finally wanted to arrive. Ginger was interested in his books, reads the Bible. I think she had the Gladys factor. Uh, marriage was not a solution. Companionship, maybe. Yeah, and we know that many of the women that Elvis dated, in the end, there was no sex. He wanted their company. He wanted to read the Bible with them, read his spiritual books with them, and just be with them and become friends. The sex would, became unimportant to him. And I think through all of the 70s, Elvis was less interested in sex. I really believe that. Hi, Jean. I'm so sorry we're going now. We've been on for such a long time, but I've loved it. I've loved this morning's live stream. More of a chat. I would say this morning we've had more of a chat. Uh, I'm on the fence regarding Ginger Olden. Vernon was not a fan of us. I still need to learn more about Ginger. I've done quite a few videos about Ginger Olden. And I do think she's a pretty genuine person. Right? I do think she's quite an honest person. Now, I will say this. On the engagement and the marriage, do I think Elvis was going to actually marry Ginger? I don't think so. Probably not. What do you think, guys? You tell me. Now... Do I think Elvis was going to marry? Wasn't it she? He was going to marry her Christmas. And I don't think Elvis was going to get married again. Really don't. But you guys have different opinions. 
Uh, I don't know. If I Vernon didn't like her, if it was the case, why is Sandy writing the ginger letters? And I don't know if I believe Vernon didn't like her. If that was the case, why was Sandy writing ginger letters after I was passed? I mean, my answer to that, Melissa, is if people think that Vernon didn't like ginger, I'd want proof. I'd want it proved. I'd want to know why people think that and how they can prove that, El that Vernon felt that way. Uh, Ginger was too young, understanding all of Elvis's health issues and care for him the way he needed to be. I, Colleen, I agree. She was out of her death. She was out of her death. She was 20, he was 42. And he was very unwell. He's chronically sick. Uh, he had this, all this trouble that was happening with the Memphis Mafia, with the tell -all book and the horrible, disgusting divorce settlement that was still going on with Priscilla, horrific second divorce settlement that really upsets me. That was all going on. So, and, you know, Elvis still had a wandering eye, didn't he, even when he was with Ginger. Anyway, guys, that's it. I think we've had a nice chat. It's been an hour and 20 minutes. I'm going to go and make some breakfast for Tino. So thanks, everyone. I'm off. I'm out of here. Um, Yeah, Tracy, you're right. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, Sue. Bye, Colleen. Bye, Melissa. Um, bye, Tracy. Bye, Jane. Bye, Jean. Sorry, Jean, that you joined us so late. We've got Sandra. Bye, Sandra. Uh, Diana and the Bex. We've got, don't forget our new member. If you watch this later, um, Tina Welpner. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, We've got Lorna and Teresa, Rosemary, Eric. I think that covers everyone. So thanks, guys. We've had a nice morning. It's morning here in the UK. It's 9:30 a.m. I'm gonna be. I'll be back on later. Um. So thanks, everyone. Great, a great chat. We've had a brilliant chat this morning. Bye, Melissa. Okay, brilliant. Thanks for a nice chat. Great company. Team Elvis, you rock. Team Elvis, taking care of business. That's what you do. Thanks, guys. Send me information. Give me information. Join. I'll put my name on so you can message me any information that helps me. Take it easy, guys. Bye-bye. Love to all of you. Love to all of you.